Welcome to this video in which I like to share my image to image workflow. Well, you could ask yourself if I already have an image, why would I make an AI version of it? Well, there can be good reasons. This, for instance, is uh, one of the first images that I took with my very first digital camera, which had a whopping 640 by 480 pixels. Uh, so it made actually terrible images. Uh, if we blow it up a bit, we will see how ugly this is. Well, uh, Comfy UI image to image can come to the rescue. Uh, look what happens if we run it through Comfy UI and all of a sudden it is a beautiful picture. Uh, another example, uh, you have an image and well, if we have a look at the left side, we see a lot of jpeg artifacts and pixelation that is not quite nice and on the right side it is run through uh, the comfy ui and there is no pixelation left at all image to image also is a great way to generate a lot of subtle var variations in in a, yeah, in a very easy way and that can of course be very nice if you are on the lookout for the perfect picture and just generate 100 and you will have a couple of nice ones if you have a picture of your dog for instance and you would like to have a painting of it well that is quite easy with image to image and also suppose you find a picture on the internet that you really need for a presentation or a report or whatever uh, but it has a little text uh, in it uh, well just run it through image to image and you can get rid of that text these are just a couple of examples of what we can do with image to image let's have a look at the workflow this is our default workflow in which the first three blocks generate an image and then we have an upscaler that we can conveniently switch on or off what we have here is a empty latent image that is generated by the uh, loader uh, on the, of a given size and is sent to the sampler what we want now with image to image is to insert our own image over here so what we need to do is uh, move these blocks away a little bit and insert over here an image loader uh, where is it image image loader load image there it is and then we have to uh, make that image latent so we do a VAE encode and that VAE encode latent output we send to the sampler that essentially is it uh, and of course I prepared a workflow that looks a bit nicer neat and tidy that's this one and uh, well let's put it to the test by simply clicking a uh, prompt and then we see what happens we get this uh, lady but now in a, in a variation with the denoise slider we can determine how close the uh, rendering will stay to the original image let's put it on 0.4 we give it less the lower the number the less freedom we give it and uh, we will see that now the uh, outcome is very close to the image we uh, offered it and if we would go to the other end let's say 0.8 uh, we will see something strange uh, it is not looking like the image at all we have have given the uh, stable diffusion sampler a lot of freedom uh, the composition is, is, is the same but the image is totally different that is because we have not entered any text prompt we can still use this image as a base and add a text prompt here let's say photo of a woman with auburn hair which is well really a minimal prompt and let's see what we get uh, with this and it uh, will obviously be a lot closer uh, yeah that's a photo of a woman with auburn hair with that composition and that color uh, so that is all working nice 
The size of the image is determined by the input image that we offer it. And our, uh, let's zoom out a bit, our uh, size input does not do anything. It is only this latent image over here that is fed to the sampler and that has these dimensions. That goes okay as long as you use uh, as an input image uh, the sizes that are well known to SDXL. But it will go wrong if you have, for instance, the very tiny uh, picture that we saw of that pink rose. That was a very small image. Uh, let me put here the text uh, pink rose and see what happens. I give it a 0.8 denoise, so a lot of freedom. Uh, but we will see that uh, yeah, it will be a pink rose, but entirely not according to my input image. That is, and, and also uh, the colors are very strange, that is because this image is not known a uh, known size for SDXL. We can change that by putting in the middle here a image resizer. I have put an extra node over here called upscale image. Well, it can also downscale. Um, it receives this input image and no matter the size, it's going to listen to the size input that we give over here because these width and height outputs are connected to the width and height inputs of this resizer. So in this setup, everything will go automatic no matter what a scale of image you put in. Uh, you can get a correct situation uh, from the sampler. Let's have a look if we sample it again. This rose that does not quite look quite well. Uh, well, it comes out uh, really nice and uh, fully automatic resized. Let's now load our girl with cowboy hat image and see what happens uh, with that. Um, we give it a little bit freedom, 065, and well, we should get a similar image and uh, with a little difference. Well, one difference, for instance, is that she lost her necklace. Over here, she does have a necklace, and over here, that's gone. Uh, so yeah, we again have to help this image a little bit with. Uh, our text prompt so we can say over here woman uh, cowboy hat and necklace let's try that and see uh, if that uh, is enough to get our necklace back yeah and we we have our necklace back again so that's nice there is a way to get that done automatically because there is a tagger that can uh, give the prompt from an image. So let's add that. Okay, here in this workflow, we have the input image, the rescaler and the encoder, but we added a WD14 tagger that gets the image as input and that comes out with a string with all the keywords that it found in this image. Uh, let me just start it, then, then we can see how it works. Um, what then uh, is another extra note is uh, to combine the text that the tagger finds with our own text. We can still add our own prompt if we want to, but it finds this prompt already fully automatic. Uh, if I would zoom in a little, it says I found a girl, solo, long hair, uh, blah, 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 jacket, belt, necklace, lips, denim, hands on hips. Everything that it sees in this image, it fully automatically uh, prompts it. And well, we get out uh, without having uh, told anything here about a necklace, we get out a, a girl with, with a necklace. Uh, that's because necklace was meant already here fully automatically in that prompt. So this is a, a workflow yeah, that can do it all automatic. And that, of course, is uh, is nice. Uh, let's do our dog. We wanted to make a watercolor painting of this dog. Uh, let's do it with the tagger, so it will automatically find out that this is a dog. It is a golden retriever. I'm curious if it can uh, find that out. Um, oh, and of course, I have to tell that I want a watercolor painting. 
uh, because now I get an image of a dog, well, a similar dog. <laughs> yeah, why would I uh, do this with AI if I already have a picture of a dog? No, I want a watercolor painting. So in my styler, I'm going to say uh, art style watercolor. There it is, art style watercolor. And let's see if, uh, I think I want to give it a little bit more freedom uh, with that watercolor, otherwise it's going to look too much like a, a non-watercolor painting. So I give it a lot of freedom and let's see what happens. Uh, by the way, I see over here in the prompt that uh, it says it had, has found a dog. It says that over here, but it does not say that it is a golden retriever. So we might get a dog that is a little bit more yeah not uh, entirely like a golden retriever well that's in the, indeed what we get it uh, could become nicer i bet if i now add myself that this is a golden retriever okay let's try it again and see if we now get a very nice watercolor painting of our dog yeah that looks more like it it has much longer hair and uh, well there's maybe a, a little bit uh, too much of an open mouth yeah that's because i gave it a lot of freedom maybe go back to 0.7 and then it will look uh, more like the image you can play with that denoise factor of course to see uh, what you get and at some point you get what you like well this is more like it the uh, mouth is more closed now so this this is it image to image there are a lot of options and a lot of possibilities uh, to uh, improve the quality of an existing image or to change the character of an existing image while keeping the colors and the content and the composition intact Maybe see you back in the next video. In the meantime, have fun.